Okay, so um, as promised, I'm going to go over some basic heat transfer calculations. Some of this will be a review. Um, some of this I'll go in a little more depth, something that we didn't go over in detail in class. This will be used for extra, extra credit this week. Um, we will go over this in more depth at a later class. Um, you'll actually do some calculations and so forth. So this is kind of laying a little bit of the foundation. Just as a review, U-value is really what we care about primarily in terms of insulation uh, because it's what we use for our calculations, as you will see. And U-value is a measure of transmittance, and all else being equal, you want a smaller U-value because it's a measure of transmittance. So as the U goes down, less the heat is transmitted. Okay, so that's important to remember. So you want small U-values. R-values, you can think of as a measure of resistance. Um, for these, it's very intuitive. More R is better. Uh, so more R means more heat flow resistance, which means better insulating value. Okay, so bigger R is better, a lower view, a lower U is better. Okay, so just remember R and U value, these are just um, characteristics of all materials. So you actually can find an R and U value for anything. Um, and we'll use it for all kinds of different services, for insulation and windows and um, wall components and so forth. So very important to remember that R values can be added. Okay, so if you layer on any any amount of R values on top of each other, you just add them up. Very easy. Um, whereas U values, you cannot add. Okay, you cannot add U's, U values. So, and I'll go over an example of that as well. Okay, and uh, again, I've already went over this in class, so just remember that air pockets are really what makes insulation work because it, it's difficult for heat to travel through um, those types of materials. One thing that we went over a little bit is something called thermal bridging. Um, and this is where you have two surfaces that have different different um, U and R values. Um, so a really good example of this is if, if you um, it's a really cold day outside and you, you're inside your house and you grab your doorknob, Okay, so your doorknob is made of metal, the doors and has some insulating material on it. That, that doorknob is going to be a lot colder uh, because it, the heat readily conducts through there. Um, and so the heat's basically escaping through that doorknob. Um, whereas through the doorway, it's less, there's less heat escaping, so it's going to be warmer. Okay, this becomes really important for um, buildings with, um, you know, all buildings, almost all buildings have this kind of stick framing. Um, and we talked about all these, um, you know, different. Uh, uh, building components that are made out of wood. So wood does not have very good insulating value, whereas the insulation, of course, does have pre pretty decent insulating value. So these stripes that you see here are um, the wood. You can actually see the framing. This is through an infrared camera that shows temperature. Okay, so this is the temperature of the outside of the house. And these are warmer. These lines are warmer where the framing is because the heat's escaping. Remember, you're outside, okay, and this is a cold day. Um, and so the heat's escaping from the building through the framing whereas with through the insulation not much is getting out okay um, and it, it is helpful to know the unit for u value which is btu per square foot per degree fahrenheit per hour okay and again we'll go over that in more detail later but i'll show you why that's important so to give you a quick demonstration of um, why you cannot add u values okay so again um, as a review, R equals 1 over U, and U equals 1 over R. Okay, so it's easy to go between those two. So I'll show you here how you can, um, why you cannot add U values. Okay, so we have three layers, okay? We lay them right on top of each other. We have an R1 on top of a 2.5, on top of a 3.5. So if, remember, for R's, you can add. Very easy, that's easy math. Okay, so that gives you R7 if you add that up. Okay, so if in order to see if we can add up the U values, what we need to do is convert these R values to U values first, okay? This is just to sort of test to see if that'll work, right? So if we want to know the, R, the U values of each of these individual layers, we need to take 1 divided by 1, 1 divided by 2.5, and 1 divided by 3.5, okay? Okay, so we're just converting those individual R's to use, okay? So what we end up with is 1, right? 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over, 1 over 2.5 is 0.4, and then we have 0.286, okay? So we have three surfaces, R1, R2.5, R3.5, and then we convert that to U, and we have an 
a U1, a U of 0.4, and a U of 0.286. And remember, this lower number is better. That's the R3.5, right? So the highest insulating value is the lowest U. All right, so what happens if we add these up? We get 1.69, okay? So is that right? Mm, as it turns out, no, because what you need to do to calculate the U of all of these layers, here's a formula here. Here's a quick one, right? So U is 1 over R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R to the N, okay? Or R nth, right? So we could do 1 divided by 1 plus 2.5 plus 3.5, which is the same as 1 divided by 7, okay? So the actual R value of these, or excuse me, U value of these three layers together is 0 0.143, okay? It's 0.143. And hopefully over time this will make more intuitive sense to you because if we have these R layers and then we're, we're actually, you know, we're going from U of 1 and 2.5 and, or excuse me, 0.4 and 0.286, right? So we have these low U values and if you add them up you increase them. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because if you add U values together, you actually increase the U value, which means you drop the U value. Remember, lower is better with U values. Okay, so again, this is just kind of like to get you thinking about this, but in order to calculate the U value of different layers um, or of a series of layers, you need to add up the R's first and then take one over that number, right? And that's that the quick formula up here. Okay, so that's just to to show you why you cannot add U values. It does, the math doesn't work out and it'll give you very, very wrong answers, okay? Okay, so let's go over a couple examples with your calculations here. Um, so this is just more for demonstration purposes. The next is the, the next slide is the real calculation. So U value, what that means, that unit is BTUs per square foot per degree Fahrenheit per hour. So what that means is how much heat, how many BTUs will flow through a one foot square slab of material each hour when there's a one degree temperature difference on either side. Okay. So if I have a, a U of, um, well, actually let's go over this. Okay. So wood has a U value of about one. Okay. And so if you have, remember a U means how many BTUs per square foot per degree Fahrenheit, um, each hour. So if I have a one square foot uh, slab of wood that has a U of one, okay? So this means one BTU per square foot per degree Fahrenheit per hour. That means that if I have one square foot of that and there's a one degree Fahrenheit temperature difference on either side and it's one hour, it's one, one BTU of heat loss, right? One BTU, okay? And again, this, don't worry too much about the math per se. This is to help you hopefully wrap your mind around what U factor is and these other, what, how other uh, factors in, uh, impact heat flow. So now I have 100 square feet of wood at 1 degree F delta for one hour. And you get 100 BTUs, right? So if you increase the surface area, all else being equal, you're going to increase the heat loss. That's the point, okay? Increase the surface area increase the heat loss and it's proportional. So now I have the same 100 square feet, but I increase my temperature, my delta T, that's going to increase my heat loss, right? So increase surface area, increase the, the heat loss. Increase the delta T, the temperature difference on each side, increase the heat loss, okay? And then if I increase the amount of time, Right, so now I have 10 hours, 10, 10 degree delta, 100 square feet, that's going to increase my heat loss. So the point of this is that as you increase your, your surface area, you're, all else being equal, you're going to increase your heat loss. As you increase your delta T, you're going to increase your heat loss. And as you increase your the time that you have those conditions, you're going to increase your heat loss, right? So that's really important. Increased U, increased area, increased delta T, and increased time as well. 
Okay, so let's go to the actual heat load calculation. This is a really, really common um, formula used in the um, energy industry. Um, you ask just about any anyone that, that deals with buildings and heat loss, and they'll have this equation memorized. It's it's very fundamental. So you want to kind of think about it, um, and it's uh, the heat load or heat loss, okay, in BTUs per hour is U A delta T. U A delta T. Okay, so the heat load BTUs per hour is U uh, times the area in square foot times the difference in temperature, delta T. Now, that you have to be careful about your units, right? Um, that's another reason why I pointed this out. This is BTUs per square foot per hour um, per degree Fahrenheit, okay? So you have to have your area in square feet, and you have to have your temperature difference in de uh, your delta T in Fahrenheit. Have to. Otherwise, this equation doesn't work, okay? So UA delta T. So let's go over a couple of really quick examples. This is just plug and play, so it's pretty simple. So my heat loss, if I have 100 square feet, uh, remember my, I calculated my U of that previous surface and it's 0.143, so that's that same surface. So I have a 100 square feet of a, of a U 0.143 uh, and temp delta T is um, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So it's real simple, right? U times A times delta T. So I just plug it in. I plug in the U times the A times the delta. There it is, okay? So under those conditions, I would have 143 BTUs per hour of heat loss. Okay, what if I increase that delta T to 20? Okay, real simple math: double the delta T, double the heat loss, all else being equal. What if I um, increase the surface area? I double the surface area. Double the surface area. I double the heat loss. Right? What if I cut the or double the U value? Remember, doubling U value is bad. Double the higher U is worse. Okay, so if I double the U, that means I double my heat loss again. Okay, so this is a real simple equation, UA delta T. For this extra credit quiz, you're going to have to, you know, do some plug and play and, you know, you might have to do some other calculations that are associated with this. But it's really, that's your basic heat loss um, formula. And so the take home is number one, that UA delta T is a really important formula. If you have um, these three factors, you can calculate your heat loss. And of course, if you have any of the any of the three factors in the equation, you can calculate the fourth if you want to, just with some simple algebra. Secondly, remember, heat transmission increases with increased U, increased area, and increased delta T. Um, and that's... Um, just that's the what I really want you to kind of uh, get th uh, get your mind wrapped around now, um, and then we'll again we'll get into more detail um, with that later. And just again remember that heat transmission is driven by delta T. If you don't have a delta T, you don't have heat transmission, and that makes sense mathematically if you go back here, right? If this is zero, what happens? Zero. My my delta or excuse me, my heat load is zero. My heating loss is zero. Okay, so if you zero any of these out, which you really can't zero, have a zero U, um, so if you zero out the temperature, you're going to have no heat loss. Okay, okay, so that's it. Um, hopefully that helps you with your uh, quiz this week.